Hello everyone, uh, this is Yunus Al Nasser uh, from Smart uh, Dubai. Uh, I am Assistant Director General and CEO of Dubai uh, Data Establishment, uh, known as Mr. Data within uh, the city of Dubai. Uh, first, I'd like to thank uh, Data Innovation for this opportunity, and it is very unfortunate that uh, we couldn't uh, meet uh, in person uh, due to what is going uh, globally today with the pandemic. But what really is important for us at this stage is that everyone is safe and everyone is taking care of uh, each other. And I believe we are at an era where data became even more important and valuable to uh, give uh, good insights and value to any decisions that's been taken uh, within our cities. And for that, I'll be sharing with you uh, the, uh, our achievement into building uh, the cities uh, with the, the future of data and boosting the transformation uh, within uh, the Emirate uh, of Dubai. And I believe there is an important question that everyone has been through. Uh, what is data and what is the right definition that can be used uh, to identify data? And, and how it's been also uh, scientifically approached. Uh, but, you know, uh, instead of going in that uh, direction and into the debate of what does data mean, let me take you through the way that I usually prefer how uh, to describe data. And if you look globally, uh, how much data is available with us is uh, just an example. Today, there is more than four uh, petabytes of data is created every day by Facebook. And that is equivalent to 300 million, uh, 350 million of photos and uh, 100 millions of hours of videos. So that's basically a lot of data. And especially with the era that we are in at the moment, with the situation of people being at their homes, there is a lot of need for digitization. So that means there will be a lot of data generated. So by 2025, there would be more than 463 exabytes of data will be created every day. So that's basically 335,000 million of photos, more than 10,000 billion of uh, hours of videos. So a lot of data will be generated from many sources and definitely has a lot of value. But the value relies with the people who can uh, evaluate the data that's available and to extract uh, the value out of it. And before getting into that area, you know, it's important to highlight what type of data that's available and how it can be used. And data, as I said, can mean many things to many different people. And it's important to realize that every touch point we have today in our life, in our cities, in our countries, in our organization is generating data. As an example, if today you are doing your shopping, you are interacting with the uh, retail uh, sector. Over there, you are uh, generating a transactions, you are buying goods, and by that, there are a lot of data in the background being generated. By moving in the city, there are a lot of mobility data and it's being captured by telcos. If you are going to any hotels, then you are checking in and checking out, and there are a lot of valuable information exists over there. If you are tra traveling across the board, and so on, uh, a lot of information can be also from different sectors, public sector, private sector, data about our economy, data about our health sector. So there are a lot of type of data that's available in different formats. Some of them are aggregated. Many others are available in its raw format. And again, the question is, what are we doing with all of those data and what do we want to achieve? And this is where I'm answering the question of what we are doing here in Dubai. So at Smart Dubai, the Dubai Data Establishment job is to enable the creation of a new forms of value out of our city. The way we are doing that is by inspiring new realities, by harnessing the value of the data, by taking the raw data and also data from multiple sources into generating a good projection a good insights and also uh, good information that can support the decision making uh, in our city. And in order to achieve uh, our goals, we've built an environment for innovation. We, of course, doing that through a proper data governance and also having it supported with a digital architecture and infrastructure that's guiding the implementation of our approach towards harnessing the value of the data. And last but not least, we are doing that through an ecosystem engagement from different constituents of the government, of the private sector, and also bringing the individual closer to our initiative to drive this value. And by that, we are one of the leading organizations who are driving the most ambition and comprehensive data initiative globally. And, 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 and keeping that in mind, 
it brings us you know to the next question what are the opportunities that have uh, we have in the data and as i described there are a lot of the opportunities that is uh, available in our data today uh, but it's a question of how we are harnessing those values and i'm sure many of the terms that is available uh, in my presentation you've heard about it i'm sure everyone knew uh, knew that data is the fuel uh, of the future some of them or some people call it the uh, the oil of the future some other calls it the, you know the new steel and, and so on so yes definitely data has a lot of value and it's a matter of how you are generating uh, that value and how you are uh, bringing the people who can analyze those data can apply to uh, the scientific models that uh, that can uh, transform that data into uh, a new insights uh, also data can support decision making and that is a great opportunity of course today in, 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 in an era of a COVID, uh, I'm sure you know uh, every uh, person and every decision maker uh, wanted to get an access to real information about uh, the current situation, uh, number of uh, infection, uh, number of uh, recovered people globally or uh, locally, uh, number of people in critical care, and they also wanted to know what is the situation with the uh, healthcare sector, uh, and of course uh, the impact of uh, of such a uh, uh, such a pandemic to different uh, sectors uh, within the city so all of the all of what decision makers needs is a lot of data and insights that can support them into taking the right measures the right controls and the right uh, decisions that can uh, support uh, uh, the, the the right uh, future uh, approach to, to to that country or to that city or to that economy so there this is an example of opportunities that we have in our data but also, on the other hand, it comes with some of the challenges, which is also well known, but I wanted to summarize it in this slide, that data comes with a lot of accuracy issues and quality issues. Of course, it has a lot of, uh, it comes in a big volume, but meaning that, you know, if we don't address the data accuracy, it can uh, uh, sometimes generate some uh, uh, misleading uh, guide towards uh, how a, a decision can be made. Uh, data integrity is another uh, challenge to be addressed, data accessibility. As we know globally, uh, many organizations uh, are, are, are called data huggers. They want to keep their data locally to themselves. Whereas you know, we are living, living an era where data should be accessible by people who needs it, uh, to exchange data to the extent that is possible. And also to have uh, data open, uh, free of charge for everyone to, to get the value of it. Uh, one of the challenges also have been data security. How do we maintain uh, the data security and privacy while we are exchanging our data? So all of those are known challenges, but they know nothing stops us from moving forward by harnessing our uh, our values out of it. And for, our, for that, to address both the challenge and the opportunity that we have from data, uh, in Dubai, we've chosen a unique approach uh, that we have uh, crafted on how we are dealing uh, with data and driving a value out of it in the Emirate of Dubai. And that has four main pillars. The first pillar is data governance. The second is around city data architecture and infra infrastructure. The third uh, is around ecosystem engagement. And the fourth is value creation. And I will now take you in a deeper, uh, deep, uh, uh, in, a, in a more depth of each and every uh, pillar uh, and what are the initiatives that we have delivered in Dubai. So when it comes to data governance, uh, our approach has been uniquely uh distinguish and globally in terms of uh, the initiatives that we've launched under data governance uh, we are one of the first cities uh, globally to have a data law that's governing the exchange of the information uh, within the city of dubai it comes with sets of policies and uh, sets of policies that address areas such as data classification uh, data confidentiality data security uh, data access rights and so on so we've detailed it to a level where everyone can know what are their obligations when it comes to data. We also uh, have simplified further the, both the data law and policies by having data standards that can easily be implementable within organizations and uh, ev all of the organizations within, uh, within Dubai uh, uh, drive data within one single standard. Last but not least, uh, we've uh, included into our uh, journey the private sector, as we know, they withhold a lot of uh, valuable information. 
uh, we wanted them to be our partner and to exchanging uh, their uh, data with the city. And we've uh, launched a full-fledged strategy on how to approach the private sector, uh, maintain uh, the confidentiality of the sector, but still uh, include them in this uh, transformation. Another uh, initiative around our data governance have been is uh, balancing between uh, innovation uh, potential uh, while we are protecting uh, the privacy by taking three different uh, approaches. One of them was about building uh, trust between uh, the different constituents who are sharing their data, uh, having an incentive mechanism for both public and private uh, sector to share uh, their data. Uh, last but not least, to demonstrate the outcomes and the values uh, that can be generated uh, from these data and inspiring new realities. Uh, with having such an approach in mind, it have unlocked a lot of uh, opportunities where I would uh, discuss in, in further slides, inshallah. Uh, uh, last uh, initiative under the data governance, I wanted to shed the light on it, is uh, our uh, AI uh, principles and guidelines that have been launched uh, in uh, June, January 2019. And that is, you know, when we are taking our uh, governance mechanism into advanced levels, uh, and uh, including it, you know, part of it would be around the technology, another part of it would be around the data. This is when uh, we are using technologies such as artificial intelligence into uh, analyzing a lot of uh, information and taking decisions uh, on behalf uh, or, uh, or together with humans. So these uh, principles have been, you know, how do we be ethical more about the data that we have in our hand? Uh, how do we maintain the security, equality, and humanity? And for that, we said a uh, principle and guidelines is not enough. We've launched a smart tool, one of its first kind globally, that can uh, as, uh, help uh, AI uh, or, uh, organizations who are dealing with AI to uh, self-assess their uh, initiative and to understand how they are compatible with the principles and guidelines we've launched. Uh, today, uh, most use cases within the government of Dubai uh, have been run through uh, the smart self-assessment tool and have been provided back to them with an, uh, uh, as their assessment level, but also with the recommendations on how do they improve their AI implementations and make it more uh, compliant towards our uh, principle uh, when it comes to AI. So that was our uh, city governance. Now I would move to city data architecture and infrastructure, where uh, we've launched in 2017 the digital backbone of uh, uh, the data exchange within Emirates of Dubai, which is called Dubai Pulse. Dubai Pulse is nurturing and hosting more city data when it comes from the public sector. It comes in two different forms. Uh, a lot of it is available for open use, but many others is available for shared purposes. When it comes to shared data, it's only available for uh, the uh, government organizations who are eligible to get the access to, to such a data. And this is when it comes to that we wanted to make sure that our initiative is holistic enough and covering most city data that's available around ourselves. Yes, of course, not all data will be available and made open, but a lot of other data can be used into creating government efficiencies and creating seamless experiences that is impacting every individual uh, that's uh, living in the Emirate of Dubai. And I welcome you all to visit Pulse.Dubai to check the amount of data that we published and also to see if you could uh, derive some value from it. Uh, we've also uh, wanted to decentralize our platforms so that we widen our scope instead of just only uh, having a centralized approach of exchanging data. We are looking at technology innovation on how do we democratize data in a decentralized platform. And for that, we've looked into four main pillars. We've looked at the technology side, we've looked at the community of people on bringing partnership around how do we uh, exchange our data in a decentralized fashion. We've built also a robust governance system that is very unique, and our methodology is being published on, on, on white papers. You can have a look at it on how do you uh, decentralize data within a city. Last but not least, we also uh, wanted to build a marketplace uh, this marketplace uh, should hold uh, the data of uh, the entities who uh, wants to, to share their data, but also to provide them with the incentive mechanism and also have a revenue generation model where they can uh, monetize uh, their data. Uh, and now I would move to our ecosystem engagement, and I would say 
we are one of uh, the uh, first cities to build a uh, full ecosystem around uh, improving the data literacy in the Emirate. And for that, we've launched a lot of initiatives, uh, starting with data champions. We have a concept which is called the data champion within each and every government department in the city of Dubai that are guiding the implementation of our uh, data regulation, data policies, and data standards, and also publication of the data on our digital uh, platform. We've supported them with a lot of educational program to certify them as being uh, data champions. Uh, we've also created uh, data advisory groups and also data boards where uh, they are guiding the implementation of citywide uh, strategy data initiative. But also we boosted the organizations with providing them with uh, a concept which is called a data clinics, where whoever in the city needs a support in terms of how do they uh, govern data within their organization or how do they start their uh, uh, data initiative within their organization or how to transform their organization to become data driven with a lot of uh, sessions where uh, we call them data clinics and uh, where we go together with them and identify their data initiative. Last but not least, we also have our science lab where I will talk more about in the upcoming slides. Uh, we've also launched a data first uh, city data challenge uh, that we wanted to improve uh, the uh, city compliance when it comes to uh, exchanging data. For that, we had uh, three main uh, objectives. One of them is to increase city data availability, uh, enhance the data governance, and nurture strong uh, data community. And we've been able uh, uh, earlier this year to, uh, uh, to announce the champions and to recognize their efforts uh, for being compliant with city data and it has made a great uh, significant move towards uh, city compliance and improving overall city uh, compliance uh, towards uh, exchanging uh, the, 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 the data within, uh, within the Emirate of Dubai. Uh, of course, when it comes to our data lab, uh, it is when we are using it for uh, public and private use case development, uh, we have a methodology around it where we start with defining the challenges uh, and uh, ideas, uh, generations, uh, to define uh, what kind of are eligible to, to be a data, a data use case. Uh, we apply to it a design thinking exercise where uh, we look at what type of outcomes that is need to be generated uh, and who are the different users would be of such an outcome and what kind of support it will provide at the end. Uh, we also combine it with a data science and analytical approach where uh, that data will be modeled, that data will be uh, used with a, a different algorithms that are coming from data science that can uh, build uh, such a use case and, and drive a value. And we do it in coordination with the uh, different constituents who can either be uh, using this uh, use case or they would be a data supplier uh, to it. And, and by that, you know, we've been able to deliver uh, many uh, data science use cases of, uh, out of the city. One of them have been very recent when it comes to COVID, where we've launched uh, a COVID uh, control, uh, or it was a COVID uh, dashboard, uh, where we've used uh, a known uh, uh, data science model such as SEIR in order to project the different scenarios that uh, the city might go through when it comes to this pandemic and understand better the spread of the virus across the Emirate of Dubai and to support the decision makers and the policy makers of the Emirate and to different actions that they had they needed to take when it comes to uh, closing some sectors in the cities uh, or you know uh, also bringing back uh, or opening back the economy uh, in the Emirate of Dubai and also keeping a close monitor on the uh, the spread of the virus in the city. So again, as I said, you know, there are a lot of opportunities, uh, but it's always um, uh, a matter of what kind of uh, uh, methods that you're going to apply to it and then uh, drive a value out of it. And now I would move to value creation, and I will talk about two different use cases that we've developed in Dubai. One of them is crowd management, and I think the value of crowd management comes at a high uh, it comes at a very high level uh, today when it comes to, uh, to the current uh, situation globally. Uh, we know that uh, there have been a lot of uh, restrictions uh, applied globally in terms of people's movement, uh, cross borders, and even internally within the cities and districts. 
And for that, you definitely need to be empowered with the right tools and crowd management comes at the heart of it, where it always has supported the uh, decision makers from both uh, uh, health sector, from the economy sector, and also from uh, security and safety perspective in order to understand how do we better best serve uh, our people and also to understand uh, how uh, the city compliance is coming when it comes to different control measures that have been suggested. And again, this is just a single example of how uh, mobility data uh, in its big data format can be uh, utilized into, uh, into uh, driving a value. Uh, many other use cases that also been identified where we are combining it with data from uh, retailers in order to understand the uh, crowd uh, effect on the retail sector uh, and provide insights in terms of footfalls. So again, number of use cases under uh, under such a tool uh, is, is is endless. It's just a matter of uh, priorities and it's a matter of how do you define the different values that you want to generate. Uh, my second uh, example over here is an economic dashboard. Uh, we've built a, a real-time dashboard for the Emirate of Dubai uh, in partnership with both of public and private sector to provide a real-time indicators in terms of how the economy is performing. And again, with the current situations, there have been a lot of questions. What is the current impact of uh, COVID on the economy? And without having such an advanced tool, without having such an advanced uh, data modeling uh, mechanisms, it would be very hard to measure uh, the economy. And, 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 and in the merit of Dubai, as I said, uh, we've been able to do that, and, and thanks to our investment and to uh, the support that we've been, we've been given by the leadership uh, into building such a capability that is today uh, helping and supporting uh, the transformation in uh, Dubai. Uh, that has been our approach when it comes to uh, city uh, transformation and harnessing the value of data. Of course, that comes with uh, 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 a lot of efforts that uh, uh, Dubai have, be, have put in into uh, driving uh, data and, and, and uh, doing such a transformation uh, through a, a, a method and uh, an uh, approach that is uh, transforming the city. Uh, we are looking towards our uh, next uh, 50 years on how do we plan uh, better uh, our future and our, we are, um, our ambition will continue in the same way that we have started uh, our initiative as a data committee. But what's really important is to look at what opportunities we have in the future. And as our wide, uh, wise leadership said, the data economy becomes an essential financial pillar of all, uh, of all future uh, cities. And we truly believe that. And it is uh, the way that the city is is looking into uh, unlocking the potential values for one single reason, and that is to transform our city uh, into becoming the smartest city by creating uh, citywide experiences to inspire new realities with an aim of achieving a happier uh, life for all. Uh, at the end, I hope by sharing our story, by uh, providing you with our methodology of how to drive uh, data innovation, within your uh, country, within your city, within your organization, or even within your individual capacity, that together we would move towards becoming a data-driven uh, uh, organizations and a data-driven uh, world where data is supporting many of our activities and transforming people's lives into becoming uh, uh, the happiest, uh, happiest in the world. Thank you again, and thank you, uh, innovation, uh, data innovation.